Hello and welcome to Amigos Retro Gaming. In this video I'm going to show you how you can run a SCSI zip drive, external zip drive, uh, from the back of a A590 hard drive plus connected to an Amiga 500 and actually boot uh, an operating system uh, from a zip disk like so here. Uh, so this particular zip disk here has got uh, Workbench 1.3 installed and um, and also show you that uh, you can install Workbench 2 uh, and uh, I guess 3, I haven't tried that but I've definitely done 2. So this uh, particular Amiga has a version 2 ROM so it will support both uh, version 1.3 and version 2. Uh, 2.0x I guess so or 2.1 so um, yeah I'll show you uh, how I've connected everything up so here we have the back of the A590 and uh, we've got the power supply input here and uh, on the back of the A590 is a SCSI port and this particular uh, zip drive happens to be a, a SCSI unit cable comes out here off the back of the A590 and in here to the uh, zip drive. I've already installed an operating system to this zip disk. If you want to uh, find out what's involved in doing uh, installing an operating system to a drive, uh, whether it be this uh, zip disk here or the A590 with the um, hard drive installed there, uh, take a look at uh, my other video where I I go through the A590 uh, hard drive there so in there I show how to install Workbench uh, 1.3 so one way of doing it anyway it seems to work fine I don't have the appropriate um, HD installer floppy disk for the A590 that I've got here uh, but I found a way around it just by copying the files from the Workbench 1.3 floppy to the hard drive now the other thing I must um, uh, tell you is that I've disconnected the um, hard drive from within this, this disk drive here. I've actually removed the power. So there's no power going to the hard drive inside here itself. Um, but all the electronics and the, you know, to drive the interfaces is all running. And that's why um, I can get this zip drive to work here. I'll show you the process of uh, booting up here, so I'll insert the disk and we'll do a reboot. Now I've got no, I've got no floppy disks in here. So this is now booting from the zip drive as you can see the uh, light, disk activity light there. Okay, so there we go, um, booted straight under Workbench 1.3. What I'm going to do now is install Workbench 2, uh, 2.04 actually, uh, on this zip disk because I've actually got another Workbench 1.3 here. So I'm going to have 1.3 and a 2 disk and I'll show you how you can just swap the disks to um, boot into the different operating systems. Uh, but bear in mind you do need a version 2 ROM or greater to um, you know to support the 2.0 uh, operating system so I'll go ahead and uh, get that installation done and come back when it's done just to show you as I say uh, I show all this on the video about the A590 how to upgrade to Workbench 2 as well I'll just quickly show you what has to be done prior to uh, doing an in-place upgrade uh, from 1.3 to 2.04 uh, is to run the HD toolbox. I did show this in the other video um, about the A590 hard drive uh, but just to show you this quickly here, this is quite important. Okay, we're just going to partition drive here. Now this uh, partition device name needs to be wb underscore 2.x click OK on that save the changes so that's writing that device name out to the Omega zip OK and um, I will do a reboot So 
so the installation's uh, done there, so I'll just remove the floppy disks and reboot the computer. Soft boot. Okay, so that was Control Amiga Amiga. So that booted from the uh, Workbench 2.05 disk that I just recently upgraded. Now, um, if, for instance, I just went ahead and uh, put in this 1.3 uh, bootable disk here into the zip drive and did a soft boot. So that's Control Amiga Amiga. That seems happy enough there. Uh, but whilst um, installing the operating systems, I found that if I didn't do a hard boot, um, the HD toolbox would sometimes or generally not find the uh, the disk, the zip disk. So I just found that hard booting um, was the best way to go. But obviously, once the operating systems are installed, uh, you can just swap between the two. So you know, I'll go ahead and um, put this disk back in here. So that's obviously one one point three version there, with a few games installed. I'm just going to, um, well, out of interest, see if I can read the disk. Yeah, see, it doesn't like it because the uh, the, the drive names have changed. So I'll just do a soft boot there and it should boot back into 2.05 just like that. So, you know, uh, you have a bunch of disks, you could have um, uh, different operating systems or different configurations. You'd have, uh, you know, a bunch of games on one disk and, uh, and another bunch on another disk. So, you know, quite versatile. Um, yeah, I'll show you one problem I have with the 1.3, the way I've been installing this 1.3, just by copying the files to the disk. So you would have seen in the uh, A590 hard drive video that I literally just copy um, the floppy disk contents to the hard drive or in this case to the zip drive. Um, 1.3 seems to work fine like that, no problems whatsoever except if I try and do the ed which is the edit uh, program. If I try and run ed, it comes up with a zero. So just for doing simple editing of, um, you know, like startup files and whatnot. I get this error, software failure. That's the only problem I've come across with um, copying the files directly from the floppy to the hard disks or the zip and um, you know you can use other programs for editing but it still is something that I'd like to sort out at some stage I'm not quite sure why this is happening um, I guess if I had the proper installation disk for the A590 uh, and it installed the 1.3 version properly instead of the way I'm doing it it I'm sure this problem wouldn't be wouldn't be there. So yeah, just one small small thing to note. So I hope you liked that video on the uh, running a zip uh, drive on an Amiga and booting uh, from a zip disk. And uh, in another video, I will show you the uh, Supra drive removable in action. Basically doing the same thing. It also runs uh, from the SCSI port on the back of the A590 on this in this particular setup. So um, it basically does the same thing. So you know I might do a short video on that one. So yeah, thanks very much for watching.